Welcome to the Market Mystics Podcast. I'm Joshua. I'm Kim. Let's dive in. Welcome back, everybody. We have this countdown and I can't help but be silly sometimes with it. It's just ridiculous. And so then we wind up laughing as we come on and here we are. Hello. Here we are. Here we are. Josh, does, how's the puppy? Uh, I've been the, dying to know. I've been living the, to know. <laughs> that's a better way of phrasing it. Yes. Uh, the puppy has been really fun. Um, also, it's a puppy. So, you know, there's there's been some... The first few nights... Well, the first... Yeah, the first few nights, there was a little bit less sleep than normal. Uh, a little bit more noise going on where uh, <laughs> we are working through the process of finding all the alternative things he can chew on besides our shoes. Um, He's a puppy. <laughs> I know. He is a puppy. And yeah. that is the only way he knows how to communicate. So uh, I walked in the door out from getting home from work today and you know, like a lot of dogs, they'll like run up to you and be all excited. He just pranced up to me and like started chewing on my ankle. And I was like, yeah, that's the only way you know how to say hi. I get it. Like, it's fine. <laughs> we'll get there. You're only a few weeks old. Um, but yeah, it's pretty fun. Uh, we have really enjoyed having him in general. And last night he only got up once in the middle of the night. And that was like a huge win because that's only his third or fourth night with us. And so that's a nice. pretty big win to have him only get up once. Sweet. And to that's only awesome. cry for a few minutes. <laughs> that poor puppy. <laughs> Yeah, but no, it's, it's been hard good. being young. Well, you know, not only is he young, but Bree and I were talking about this from like a a human being point of view. And what would it be like if at a month and a half you get taken from your environment, your family, your siblings to go live at a strange place with people you don't know in a new environment? Like it's a like it's a traumatic event. Like there's for sure. That's, it's a big thing. And so, um, as he slowly adjusts to life in our house, I'm, things will get better and better. And he is very well loved by, uh, my family and everyone who has met him. Um, and I think he will be, I think he will be just fine. <laughs> I'm sure he will be thriving. Yes. He already That's is awesome. doing really well. Yeah. I'm not surprised. He might wind up being like the most perfect dog. I mean, he might be. He might be. He might be. I mean, there's a lot of really good dogs out there. I know, but it's hard to beat your own dog. That's true. He will be the best dog in my mind. That's yeah. what's important. <laughs> that is what's important. Well, today I have a question for you to kind of kick off uh, the podcast. Are you ready for it? I'm ready. <laughs> All right. If from this moment forward you existed only in spirit, what do you think you would have wished you would have done while in a body? Uh, full disclosure, you asked me this before so I could think about it and not have a bunch of dead space. Yeah, it's true. But I think the answer I've come up with is I think I would have wished I would have taught more people how to hear and operate in the spirit. Mm. <laughs> I think about like my kids and like even friends who aren't in the mystical movement or even some that are and just aren't really familiar or like confident in that. I think if I was only existing in spirit form, I really would have wished that like I taught them how to interact that way mm. so that yeah. I could still interact with them. <laughs> it's purely selfish. No, I think it's, it's, 
like I see where you're coming from because your desire is still to be connected to the ones you loved. Mm -hmm. And so I don't want to lose relationship. Yeah. Right. Even though you'd gain a lot of other things, you don't want to lose that relationship. And what I think is interesting is like, whether or not you phrase that connection, that question in like a, if you died tomorrow, what would you want? Like I'm, trying to reframe it in like a mystical point of view of like, um, not death. Yeah. You're not death. You're, it's totally still alive. You're just in a different dimension, but what do you wish you would have done here? And one of the big reasons that I think that question is important is over maybe this year, like it has become like super forefront of my mind that the point of Christianity was that God came in a body. And I have felt often that the focus has been not on what you can do while in a body, but the focus has been on what you can do when you leave the body. Hmm. And so it just like really stood out to me as like a way of reframing, like a common question that, that, gets tossed around a lot um, but reframe it in a way that's like how does it apply to my worldview and I think the answers are going to be very much the same like I wish I would have connected more with this friend I wish I would have told this person I loved him more I wish I would have you know it's always like I feel like most of the time the answer is relational Like most of the time when people think about that question, the answer is relational. It's rarely, oh, I wish I would have worked more hours. I wish I would have made more money. Like it's, it's rarely that there may be elements of that, but for the most part, it's, I wish I would have loved better. I wish I would have connected better. Like those are the things that I think about. And it's just, it's like, hmm. It's interesting to me when I think about like, well, God incarnated a body so that he could, at least in some degree, connect like relational. It was a relational choice. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, I just think it's it's just like standing out to me and like, I don't want to miss the purpose of being of existing in this form. Like, even though I know I will exist forever in a multitude of forms, like this particular form, I don't want to miss the point of it. I don't want to like, we've talked about this before, but like if you approached every situation as you're interacting with part of Christ, like, how different does that make it? What do you do different? And instead of like, uh, I think where my mind has been is instead of seeing Christ as this like outside of myself one day, or I can only connect when I'm ascending in the spirit, but like, what does it mean to like have a conversation with you and be like, Oh, I'm talking to, Kim the Christ and like see your purpose and your value in that. Like it's, I think that just changes your whole approach to life and your whole approach to the body. Like, I think that's part of the reason that immortality is important to me is immortality was already part of my belief as a Christian, because if I died and went to heaven, I had everlasting life with Jesus. But Mm -hmm if part of the point was to have a very, very, very long life in a carbon based body, like, well then what's the point of that? Like we got to figure out what the point of it is so that we can reach that point. Hmm. So what then Josh would be your answer to that question? Yeah. I mean, at the moment, I think it's just like, (sighs) I feel like I've worked hard on some of this question. And so like really trying to connect with the people around me better. Um, And so I think it would just be like a continuation of that. Like 
what things in life do you prioritize? Um, like, did you prioritize physical health so that you could like be able to interact with kids and grandkids and great grandkids and great, great grandkids? Um, like at what point did you, uh, what point, what is your intent with that life? I think. And so like, I think I have already started on that journey and trying to be more intentional with how I use my time. And I don't think you have to optimize every single moment of every single day. Like, you know, that's probably not realistic, but, um, I was just listening to an interview today and this person was like, how often do you do things you don't want to do? And it wasn't even hard things. He's like, sometimes you do hard things, but you want to do the hard thing. And Mm -hmm. so it's not actually that much of a challenge because you want to be doing it, but it's a real challenge to do the hard thing that you don't really want to do, but that you know you need to do. And so when I'm thinking about that in this context, does that look like, um, like reconciliation in a relationship Or does that look like going to the gym when you don't want to? Does that look like, oh, I like haven't intentionally connected with my creator at all this week. Maybe I need to take 30 minutes to do that. Like, um, you know, whatever that may be, um, I think the self-awareness is the point of the question. Like, if you start, if you're able to start asking yourself these types of questions, I think it can open up a door to what you wish you really were doing in general. Hmm. Do you think the more you kind of dig into that and think about it yourself and um, start going down that path, do you think action then comes from that? Do you think that's a natural byproduct? Hmm probably depends on the person Um, because there's a lot of people who have gotten really good about dreaming about how they wish life was, uh, but not really following through with taking any steps to get there. Um, Mm -hmm. And so I don't know that that's a natural byproduct for everybody. I know I find myself doing that sometimes like dreaming about, Oh, like life could be like that. And instead of just taking one step towards it, you hold it at a distance. Um, But I think even that in and of itself can be a, can be a very revealing thing because then you can ask yourself, why am I holding at it at a distance? Do I believe that I actually shouldn't have what I'm dreaming about? Like there's a lot of, there's a lot of self-reflection that can go into it. But one of the easiest ways to get, unstuck from a situation or a belief system or whatever you're in is to just take a step, like to just move towards something. And so it's important to have that vision of, yeah, maybe this is what I want. And it's equally as important to take a step towards it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think that's good. I was also thinking about, mm, you know, you talked about God and being in a body mm. and that kind of being the point of Jesus on the earth. Um, I also think about like the way that I answered, he kind of did to accept that he did something about it. Mm. So he like came back and he's like, listen, I'm only, I'm here for now. I'm going to send my spirit and my spirit's going to be with you. It's going to guide you. It's going to tell you things, comfort you, like all these things. Right. And then, and it is like for the sake of, I'd like to assume for the sake of relationship. Mm-hmm. Right. I'm not actually leaving you. Like you think I'm leaving. I'm not leaving. I'll actually still be with you, but you have to learn how, to function with me that way. Right. Or you will learn to function with me that way. Mm -hmm. And I think maybe that's a really good example too. 
just in that. <sighs> okay. I always bring this up. He always says like all these things in greater, right? So are our spirits not also still able to be moving and um, interacting and be relational even if the physical body is not still present? And I think the answer is yes. But I also think the answer is we need to be able to be intentional about it. But we also probably need to be familiar with people enough that they'll recognize it. Mm -hmm. And then also, I mean, to what I was saying, probably be intentional about people knowing how to tune in that way. Yeah. And recognize some of that, you know, and I think there is action associated with even that part. Um, just because it, doesn't have to be someday it could be like well no we're just gonna we're gonna learn that we're gonna focus on that right and also i'm not getting i'm not trying to get into like ghosty stuff that's not that's not where i'm going with this but i don't know i also don't want to go down this other rabbit trail like <laughs> I was thinking of something else and I'm like, don't go there, Kim. Do not do that. <laughs> That's funny. No, I do think that like the original intent was for there to be less of a disconnection than what maybe we often see at the moment. Um, but like when you were talking about it, I was thinking about, um, you know, an interview that we did with um, Dr. Farney months ago, where he talked about like, right after his brother died, he felt the presence of his brother with him in a moment. But that's someone who he was like, deeply connected with, and like, really in tune with his brother. And, um, and it only happened once. And so like, I think about like, are we still able to interact? Yes, I think so. But also like, I don't think, I'm not sure that life just stops and education just stops and you, um, you're just sort of sitting in a balcony watching earth play out. And so like, oh, yeah, like, there's other things going on. You have other responsibilities. You have other things you need to do. And, and so like, would you still be able to come check in on your kids? Probably. But like, it's, I think it's, uh, yeah. I mean, we're just kind of guessing because, you know, there's not like a, an exact way of knowing this, but yeah, I think that there's, it is a different, it is a different interaction. It's a different level of connection. And I just don't want to miss the level of connection we have while dreaming about a level of connection that will exist someday. Hmm. Yeah. I don't want to miss the glory that is in all of creation now just because my nervous system currently sees it as fallen. I don't want to hope for something one day when it could be right now. I think that's so good because isn't it so easy to just be like, Oh, well, this is the perfected state that we're not there yet. Right. Ugh. Creation. Am I right? Like, you know, there's some of that stuff that happens because it's just like, or even with people who have struggles, you know, people who are suffering, uh, people who don't have it all together, you know, and well, maybe not now, but when they're in a better state, right? Like, and some right. of those things. And I think what I'm hearing from what you're saying, whether you're actually saying it or not, what I'm picking up is like, there really is deep connection to be had now. Mm -hmm. and 
um, no need to wait until some time is perfect or um, until we're all just in spirit form or until one is and one is not. Mm. Like that's really what I'm pulling from all of this is mm, sometimes I think just because you're familiar with someone and what it's like to be around them. It may be easy to not continue to dig in to know them even more deeply um, and not have like that huge connection all the time. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like I think about my husband, like it's easy. We could sit on the couch and watch a movie together um, and be experiencing something together, but still not connecting further. Right. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like time spent isn't always a deeper connection. And I yeah. think there's super, there's a lot of value in that connection. Yeah. Yeah. And I just like, I think it works with, people i think it works with cre creation with nature like like can you spend time in it intentionally looking to see it in a in a new light like i think that is that is the ultimate thing you can offer to a to a spouse but to someone you're in relationship with is to is to allow them to be a new person as often as you can to allow yourself to see them in a new light as often as you can. And I think that's mm -hmm. the greatest gift you could offer to creation too. Like, couldn't you see creation in a new light as a new creation as often as you can? I mean, every day would probably be ideal, but that's probably not realistic in a relationship where you've known someone for years, like you could train yourself to do that, but like to um, change your verbiage from, well, this is how it's always been. This is how they always react. This is how my animals always react. This is what always happens to plants. Like, can you uh, even just for a moment, allow it to be, Oh, I never saw that about them. Oh, they're changing. This is new. Like, and allow them the space to express themselves in a new way without holding them in that box that we've hold them, held them in. I think that's how we see the glory that that's how we see God's glory that is all of creation is we allow it to be expressed new. I think you're right. And I think it's, it's interesting because it's like opening yourself up for new revelation every day mm. and not necessarily just from God. Like yeah. you could reveal something new about yourself to me and I'm always looking for the reveal. You know what I mean? And that is, that is like you said, it is newness. It is even in the people you've known for 87 years you know what I mean? And you feel mm -hmm. like you know them inside and out. I think there's always still something to be revealed, but the same can be said about God. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's our longest relationship. In my opinion, yeah. I believe that we were with him before we were born and brought to this earth. And so that relationship is long established. We've known him for eons and yet there's still more to learn every day. But if there's still more to learn about him every day and he is the creator of all of these things here and he is in all of these things here, then don't you think that there could always be something new to be revealed within that too? Yeah. If we just look for it, it's kind of like revelation from God. If we're not looking for it, it's going to be hard for him to get through to us. It's not that he can't. Right. Right. But it's a lot easier if you're looking for it. For sure. And it's more relational. It is way more relational. Right. And don't you feel closer to him when you get like one of those top secret things? It's like, oh, people don't know this. 
this is something new. Like it's bonding, it's binding. It's so, so good. You're talking about um, seeing like newness in creation. Yeah. I was driving to work this morning and I was stuck in traffic, which is not usually a pleasant experience, but <laughs> I was like in awe because I was, I'm like on an off ramp going to a different from one highway to another highway and over in like the curved area that is just land, the ground was covered in purple. I don't know if it's like purple sage or what it is, but it's like the f- a floor of purple. And then as it was going up the hills, because it builds up to meet the on-ramp and stuff, where all of these sunflowers in bloom. And I was like, this is magnificent. <laughs> How do I not see this all the time? Right. And even sometimes, like we live in Kansas, which is not known for being the most beautiful place. But I was thinking to myself, you know what? If Kansas does anything right, it is wildflowers. And it's so pretty. And if you will just look for it, you'll find it. And I mean, that was one of those things. This is a real life example of this morning. I drive that way all the time, you guys. All the time. And today I was just like struck by it. Yeah. And you wouldn't have seen it. If it hadn't have been for traffic. Right. Had I not been slowed down. Absolutely. Yeah. And then later in the day, after I picked up the kids from school, we're driving back and I'm like pointing out all the, all the flowers at the side of the road. I'm like, you guys look at all these flowers <laughs> everywhere. Uh, that's I, that's the point, right? That's the seeing something in a new light is you get to see the, you saw it and then you got to open other people's eyes to it. Mm -hmm. Like, isn't that's like that to me is like our role as Christians, as sons is to see, to see creation, to see people in a new light and then to be able to go to someone and be like, did you see that? Did you see how that's brand new? Did you see how that wasn't there? Like, and then it changes everyone. Oh, that's so good. Good stuff, Joshua. Thank you. I feel like I end every episode like this. (laughs) We often start the episodes the same too. So we just have a rhythm. You know what? We're going to do something new next time. Josh, let's do something new next time. Okay. Okay. Listeners, get ready. (laughs) I hope it'll blow your socks off. It might not. It might not. It might. It might. It'll make us think new thoughts, though, and maybe you too. Yes. I love it. Okay. Well, until then, we'll see you next time. See you. Hey, thanks for listening. Keep up with us along this journey by liking, subscribing, and becoming a member through YouTube. Members get exclusive access to bonus content with our guests, deeper dives into topics, and a look into other projects. We're glad to have you here. See you next time.